Today we uh, recognize, again, it's New Year's Day, but it's also really significantly the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. And we recognize this woman, Mary. Mary, who is really controversial in the life of our church in the world, right? Because when people think about the Catholic Church, what do they think? For, who aren't Catholic, they say, well, why are you praying to Mary? Why are you, why are you idolizing Mary, et cetera, et cetera? But we recognize Mary as a significant figure, right? We recognize her as a gentle woman, a mother, but also we recognize her as being powerful, right? A powerful witness to the gospel, a powerful witness to what it means to truly follow Christ. And during the time when this teaching was given by the church, around 431 AD, a long, long time ago, there was a battle against who Jesus was. Right? So it was a belief, there was a belief that was pushing that said, well, Jesus is only human, he's not God, he's not fully divine. So in order to stamp kind of extra and enforce that belief that indeed Jesus is fully human and fully God, the church recognized a belief that had existed all throughout the time of the existence of Jesus, that he indeed was God, and they claimed that Mary was not only the mother of Jesus, but he's, she's the mother of God, right? She's the mother of God who is fully, or Jesus who is fully human, fully divine, fully God. So a beautiful recognition that indeed Mary is a powerful figure. So what can we learn today in this gospel about how, what Mary is teaching us about how to follow Jesus? Well, we hear three important moments in this gospel. We recognize that Mary stayed she prayed, and she obeyed. She stayed, she prayed, and she obeyed. Mary stayed because she's a mother, right? She stayed with her child, she stayed with Jesus, and she stayed in the manger, in the stable where Jesus was born. It wasn't that Jesus was born and then they ran and they peaced out of town and they recognized, you know, I gave birth to the Savior, now give me some royalties, give me some good things, right? No, she stayed kind of in the mess, right? She stayed there. And the shepherds proclaimed the goodness, and the magi visited. She prayed, right? We heard in the gospel that it talked about Mary reflecting all these things in her heart. Well, in other, in other translations of the gospel, it says ponder, right? So this isn't just simply her recognizing what happened. No, it's Mary recognizing that indeed she gave birth to the Savior, and that indeed this is part of God's salvific plan. This is bigger. This is part of God's story. She pondered these things and recognized the goodness of God and how this was part of his story. And then she obeyed, right? She named him Jesus as she was asked to. She took, she took him to get circumcised, as was the custom at the time. She was obedient to the custom. She was obedient to the law. She was obedient to what the Lord was asking of her to do in those moments. So what does this mean for us? Indeed, we are encouraged as to live like Mary today, right? To be like Mary, to stay, to pray, and to obey. To stay with the Lord. In every experience in our life, the Lord is present somehow, right? Even if it's challenging, the Lord is indeed present with us. So do we experience moments in our life, and then we move on? Or we experience in moments in our life that are difficult, and we try to escape them? Or do we stay with the Lord in them, Stay with the Lord in them and recognize that he is indeed with us, walking with us, comforting us, and desiring to be with us in those moments. Do we pray? Do we ponder things? Do we reflect on our experience? Do we recognize that our experience in life is part of God's story? Our life is not, you know, it's not like we're living and then, oh, when we get to heaven, then we'll be part of God's story, then we'll be with God. No, our life right now is part of what God desires for us, what part of God's story. So to recognize that the Lord is indeed active, he is indeed with us, and our story is indeed wrapped up in his when we invite him in, right? We need to invite him in. And then thirdly, obedience, right? Do we obey the church? Do we desire to do what the church asks of us? Do we desire to do what the Lord asks of us through the church? And this is difficult because there are challenging things that the church proposes, but if we indeed believe that this is the truth and we believe following the Lord is what our hearts are made for, then are we being obedient like Mary is? 
and was. So today, as we celebrate and recognize Mary as the mother of God, again, we recognize her as a gentle figure, but a powerful one. And we recognize her as a model disciple. So let us look to her to teach us how to live, to teach us how to stay with the Lord, how to pray, how to ponder, and how to obey. And most significantly, let us ask for her intercession as we come to our Lord today in the Eucharist, as we continue to live our lives. Let us ask for her intercession, that she may be with us, she may be a mother to us, and that she may comfort us in our times of great need.